Motorsport and welcome to this special Great North East Train Journeys, the special playlist which enters the world of trains and railways. Today we're going to look at the story of the Pacer by looking at this documentary aired some time ago about Pacer trains and we will review it and prove it. Who brought me to a bus graveyard then? Well, come on board and I'll tell you all about the Pacer trains and the buses. Right, the famous Pacer. The famous Pacer. Bone rattlers, cattle trucks, call them what you like. Passengers can't wait to see the back of them. They're just so noisy that you can't hear yourself think on the phone. It's hard reading a book because it's shaking a bit. <laughs> Perhaps the biggest problem with the Pacer trains is that they didn't start like as trains at all. <laughs> In 1985, British Leyland was facing a worrying drop-off in demand for its buses. At the same time, there was a spike in demand for trains. A devilish plan emerged. If we start off with the Leyland National Bus. That's what we're on This now. is what we're on now. Okay, so have a look at that. Yeah. And this is the high-speed freight wagon. Right, this is freight. That's a freight wagon, What's yes. What's that got to do with the pace of bus? Okay, so what we do, we take the wheels off the bus, and we take the top off the freight wagon, yeah. and we put the two together like that. And that basically is the idea of the pacer. It's a bus body on a freight wagon under frame. And the final version, looks like that. At that very moment, one of these Frankenstein trains creeps up behind them. That's a uh, pacer, Nick, at the front of there. The pacer train came in as a stopgap measure, but today there are still over a hundred rattling around the north and across Wales. Roaming stock companies lease out each of these trains for an estimated £50,000 a year. As Nick's bus threatens to outpace a pacer, he wonders whether there's any incentive to get rid of them. In whose interest is it to actually keep maintaining these things rather than investing big money in new rolling stock? The rolling stock companies, presumably. Yeah, I mean, you can make an argument that it makes sense to sweat the assets. We don't have to sweat them to death, Eric. Things are 30 years old. <laughs> Some of them have argued, you know, that they are against the pacer trains and they do actually want to get rid of them. But it's not entirely in their gift to do that. The rolling stock companies say it's not feasible for them to buy new trains without a go-ahead from the government. And the Department for Transport has now waded in promising the end of the pacer by 2020. Until then, passengers will be in for a bumpy ride. Originally, the Pacer train was going to be a stopgap measure to allow rolling stock companies to invest in new trains. 30 years later, they're still full in service and serving the people of the North and Wales. Seen here at Sunderland, a Pacer train is ready to take up duties to Hexham. It is full and standing. I would not recommend boarding this service. And departing you off, the train is still full and standing. Most people have argued they want change, they want newer trains and investment. But looking at the Pacer, it's a Layla National bus body on the wheels of a freight wagon. We are paying high prices 
for that. We need investment up in the north. We're even standing on buses. And most of the buses we have are very old. Seen in front, that bus is at x -Ridge. The pollution coming is horrendous. As we cross the Tyne Bridge, taking the thought of, could we get newer trains? Could we get trains with power sockets, free Wi-Fi? Come for your seats. We shouldn't be paying high prices for trains that were around in our parents' era. Pacer trains were originally a stopgap measure. We need improvement in our railways. There has been over 100 train cancellations due to the breakdown and failures of this train. And the smoke that comes from the top of these trains is horrendous. Me personally, I think these trains are a breach of health and safety. But I wouldn't pause that everyone thinks that. Seen here depart in Metro Centre. A four coach pace train. Looking at that, it just reminds you of your parents' era. It's totally not acceptable that we are treated like we're at the bottom. And seen here arriving. Nobody wants to board this. That's my argument against this. We need improvement. The Pacer train was constructed in 1985. There was 96 units built. They were manufactured by British Rail Engineering Limited, Derby. They were built to be identical to a Leyland bus. Surprisingly, only two of these Pacer trains have been scrapped. After 30 years in service, no wonder they have been refurbished throughout their service life. The formation of this train is two cars per train set. The capacity of these trains is 102 to 121 per train set. The operators of these trains are Arriva Trains Wales and Northern. The specifications of this train are as followed. The car body construction is steel under frame. The car length is 15.55 metres, 51 foot tall in width. The height of these trains is 13 foot tall. Flexible in the two diagram within only the wheelbase is 9 metres, 30 foot tall. They are limited to 75 miles per hour. The weight of this train is 47.47 tonnes. The transmission is hydraulic. These trains can't operate after the 31st of December 2019 due to restrictions within the Disability Discrimination Act and many other acts.